Uh, my name is Stacy Savatsky. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Collections and Exhibitions Manager here at LPGA. Um, I'm so glad you're here to listen to Benjamin and see this wonderful exhibition. I want to thank a couple people for introducing Benjamin. Um, first of all, I want to thank Kukla for producing this great video. Um, and all of the lenders and the sponsors to make this a fantastic exhibition. Thank you so much. And especially to the curator of the exhibition, Barbara Archer. I think most of you know Barbara. She's been in this arts community for a long time as a curator, educator, and the founder of Barbara Archer Gallery. I have to take out my cheat sheet now. Um, her gallery was founded in 1995 and showcases self-taught masters in historically important vernacular art of the 20th century. But, and it was, it's just been wonderful to work with her over the past couple of months and just need to say that, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So did we. We had a great time with you guys. Thank you. But now, I would like to introduce Benjamin. Um, Benjamin is Atlanta born, Atlanta native, born in 1954. He has a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of West Georgia. He's accomplished a lot in his 40 year span, which is what this represents, this um, retrospective. In 1993, he um, received an individual artist grant and drawing from the Georgia Council of the Arts. In 94, National Endowment for the Arts and Southern Art Federation Regional Fellowship. In 96, 97, he received residency fellowships and a CGR scholarship for the Hammond Center of in Raven Gap, Georgia. In 2003, he got the Louis Comfort Tiffany Foundation Individual Artist Grant. He's also in many, many public and private collections from Atlanta to London, from New York to Hong Kong, um, some of which are, of course, Mocha GA, the High Museum, the Morris Museum in Augusta, the Whitney Museum in New York, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the J.B. Speed Museum in Louisville, the Ogden Ogden Museum of Southern Art in New Orleans, and many, many more. His work's been featured in all sorts of publications, including the AJC, Art Papers, the New York Times, and Art in America. And he is represented by White Space in Atlanta, the Henry Boxer Gallery in London, the Shrine in New York, and Laney Contemporary in Savannah. It is my pleasure to introduce Benjamin Jones. Of what we 
we love, and what we need to take care of. And then this one's about pear. I've got a pear for a while. I've lived there for a while. And uh, this is an early piece, and I had these things that artists had given me throughout the year, and I'd find them on the streets of Paris and everything. And Don, do you remember this? Can't see that. Come here, big boy. <laughs> Remember that painting you did? Yeah, that was the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then this, he took this. He gave it back to my door. Yeah. yeah. All right. You say it. I don't know if you have to remember it. But it's just a, a accumulation of uh, everything I love about Paris and daylight and nightlight. So, you know, it has a lot of those. Those dark streets in there and stuff. And then my beloved Luciano, when some one of my animals died, I always do a obituary for him. And he lived to be 21. And uh, I'm an overprotective parent, so that's why. And my best friend in my whole world was a cat. Her name was Miss Audrey Epper. And she uh, passed right after her mother. I had to put her to sleep and everything, but. <coughs> She was my best friend, and she's the one that stopped me from uh, using one of those shotguns. Because I knew nobody was going to take care of an old cat, and it was up to me. And, uh, and of course, who doesn't love Audrey Gapper? <laughs> and when she passed, I did the joy for her. And then, when I took care of my mother, she on a late day, one way in, one way out, uh, they would drop off old dogs, or pregnant cats, or old cats. There was a neighbor that took care of the dogs, and I took care of all the cats. And so one of the cats was feral, which had ten baby kittens, and I took all of them to get them spayed, neutered, and um, shots and everything. And then I had two left. I had five of them, and then I got uh, down to two. And this is Sissy Boy and Gray Boy. And this is a, a please take it at one of my shows at Mark Archer. And so, um, Gray Boy now is with me. He's the last, and he's at the hotel room, and he's 15. <laughs> and Sissy Boy is a great story. Um, when I took him down, you know, it was like male, female, male, female. I said, oh, he's a, he's a pretty Sissy Boy, real feminine, and he has <laughs> personality. And the vet Mary called, she had to shave one of them, it was Sissy Boy. She said, Mr. Jones, do you know that sissy boy is a sissy girl? <laughs> <laughs> so she's a sissy girl. And, uh, but, uh, and then, uh, it's just things I love that I want, you know, that make me happy and stuff, and, and other topics. Like this is back in 2003, and I pulled it out, and it was titled Husband and Husband. So, you know, I was thinking ahead right there. And, uh, <laughs> So hopefully it'll stay that way, but I'm not a marriage kind of guy, so um, he's the do it. And this is a new one from uh, Tavi, and it's about uh, it's about Roman holiday, Audrey Hepburn. And this is uh, about, it looks like sea flowers or a garden or shells and everything. And it has a lot to do with uh, Tavi or the sea, and I call it salt island. But that's the uh, time using Indian word for salt. And then I do, uh, I keep journals and uh, my diaries and things. And then I, once I finish one, I, I celebrate with doing a drawing. And so this is one of the drawings that I did from the journals that I moved on about Paris. And I do a lot of animal imagery. Now, okay, we got uh, religion. Well, I'm not a religious guy, but I like that imagery and those weird uh, how people get it from their own. Like the Bible can be read so many different ways, it's just insane when somebody picks something up and says, No, this is it. No, this is it. But I did a series on seven virtues and seven deadly sins, and this is when Obama was running for president. And uh, I had hope in it, and I had hope for eight years. No longer. But uh, this is kind of what was going on in the country. We were feeling good and something new was about to happen. So.
So, um, and I love this piece. I haven't forgotten about this piece. This is the Annunciation. And uh, all my life, and through a double, I never saw photographs or drawings of black angels. They were never represented. And I had this one. Black angels in there. You know, it's like my father who would, he was a racist. And uh, I, I hated when he said that in I just hated it all my life. So I stood up to him one day, but I did it in a way that I said, You believe you're going to heaven? He said, Yes, I am. I said, What are you going to do when you get up there and see all those black angels? <laughs> he never thought about that. <laughs> That's the last time he ever used the N word in front of me. So, um, and this is uh, Father, Son, Mary, pregnant, and this is Christ in here. So, and this is from the uh, says it's deadly sins and virtues, and this is about being connected to something. And this is the deadly sin development. Whatever the hell that is, you know, <laughs> the sin. Of. This is an old piece from '84, and uh, I went on a trip to Italy. And when I came back, I had I just ate all that up, especially that bread from religious Madonna stuff. But while I was out there, I discovered the Black Madonna of Poland. and. She, she had black features, but she's black, and it just didn't make a lot of sense to me, but then a lot of people talk to me about it. But this is where this comes up, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's my father, that's me, and it's the Holy Ghost. And Tina Turner has always been an angel to me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why she was there. And then the postcards are cut up from my father sent to my mother from So, uh, baby doll. Now, everybody around me was having babies, and I wanted a baby. Not a real one, but I went to the store, and I thought, well, I'm going to make the prettiest baby that ever was. <laughs> and so I had collected all this stuff since I was a little boy, uh, and it was just in boxes, and I thought, I mean, she needs to be pretty even more. So a lot of that stuff is from uh, our childhood, and a lot of stuff is uh, what people have given me. There's a Chanel pin up here on this, and so I do. And then a uh, stopwatch I used to wear when I was young. And my daddy bought my brother four dairy queens. And he didn't, he took care of me. He said I was a bum. Being an artist, he couldn't understand that. But that's a dairy queen whistle. And then at Arkwright School in Atlanta, they used to have these like Halloween carnivals and you'd pay a quarter and get a surprise box. And this little orchid was in that and I gave that to my mother and things like that. So it's all, you know, it has a lot of older stuff, but really And uh, I made this for my mother and she said this is the most, the best piece I've ever made. And she said, I could not sell it or give it away. But I wanted to do something that was uh, a little bit like um, Jesus drinking out of the chalice and stuff. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do like a, a bowl made with holy water and things like that. And this is part of religion back in 95. It's passing judgment. And that's what I see organized religion does. It's past judgment, so it's kind of a um, screaming hope. And then this is about uh, this series of people who are unwanted, animals who are unwanted, and this is victim of judgment. And they're the innocent that always gets picked on or killed or uh, shamed. So, yeah, so, uh, and then this is from the uh, Seven virtues, seven sins, and this is pride. And this is the devil's parade. It's like when he wins, he, he parades. And uh, that's what that's about. It's kind of, as I was doing it, it kind of has a Mardi Gras 
uh, feeling to it, you know, those uh, fast shoes and things. So I kept on doing it for a long time. I haven't seen it in a long time. But anyway, I did a bunch of watercolors. This is uh, back in 1999. And Judith Alexander bought a lot of them. And uh, this is St. Francis of Assisi. And growing up in the South, we had church fans. Well, my grandmother did, and other people did. I only went to church a couple of times when I was little. My mother told me if I wanted to, I could. If not, fine. But uh, I never saw my father in church until he died. And then, uh, so I remember church fans going to visit my grandmother in North Georgia. And it's my commentary on uh, religion again here. Is that a camera? Oh, shit. <laughs> no. so, and this one here is, I like to send friends and uh, special people mail off. So I ask a few to send me back some so I can show. But if I'm not doing an art or writing in my journals, then I'm doing uh, mail off and save it in. What that's about. Now this flag here is, uh, Mother and I put up a flag in her house, uh, September 11, 2001, and hung it down. And it stayed there for one year, and then we took it down, and I decided to do something special with it, but I could never think about those touring shredders. And so this one has to be a good friend, a collector in New York, and I, she and I think a lot, a lot to let it play in. This is the enemy's list. <laughs> of uh, Agent Orange, and uh, she went, she puts that on her door. <laughs> and she's a uh, how do you say it in New Zealand? She's at the uh, Museum of Modern Art. All right, now we're going into suffering, which is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> But a lot of people don't know about this, or they do, you have to read both sides. But is anybody familiar with that number? It's, uh, it's uh, O.J. Simpson. Uh -huh. And he's not mentioned anywhere else, but it tells about all the pain and suffering that, I don't say pro or con, but just the suffering that went for everybody. So I asked him to hang it this way, so. It's never been seen, so I wanted to bring that out. And then I did a series on decline of civilization back in 1995. And there's the ruins of the cities, nature dying, and whatever this is is coming out of that. So I don't know if it's uh, uh, disease or something new, growth or something, but it's decline. And I found this on the streets, and it's about um, Paris, and one of those maps, and it was old, and I said, well, that'd be perfect for that. And uh, I, I enjoyed making this piece. Kind of, when you make such pieces, you, you go to the next level. This helped me, got, helped me get to that next level. So it can be a small piece, it can be a large piece, but there's certain pieces that stick out for the artist, uh, more special than others. And then this is about burning your friend, and it's about uh, backstabbing, gossip, that kind of thing. Um, she kind of, kind of got the idea of Joan of Arc, but um, you know, you, you torture your friend and you hurt your, your friend when malicious gossip and backstabbing occurs. And then I did a, a, a series on family. This is the evil stepsisters. <laughs> and I took this from a uh, Cinderella story. And so everybody has evil something in their family. <laughs> but uh, these are evil stepsisters. And then the suffering here is I did an isolation series. And this is about uh, isolating the disease. It's uh, looking under a microscope. And this is the uh, figure that has the disease kind of worried, and these are the cells and disease and all that around it. Hmm. 
And this is also, it's about the ugly swan. This is ugly and sad, but you know, you're ugly, and then the swan becomes the most beautiful thing on earth. So it's about trying to grow up and be wise and you succeed. But beauty means a lot inside our world. And changing is real interesting. I didn't know where to put it because I like it, but I tell Barbara, I said, it was, uh, it's about somebody changing, maybe schizophrenic, maybe uh, two personalities, but something's happening there, they're combining. And I wanted to show that because there's a lot of mental illness that we need to address. And this was done, I did a series on pollution. <laughs> and this is the lake, the blue, the animals living and dying in it. And this is the oil that drills out by the ocean. And then this is the pollution that's happening and the buzz of dead animals and such. And Samyak's from the decline of a civilization. And that seems perfect for the decline of a civilization. And Samyak. Worrying about everything. <laughs> and uh, this one is uh, very personal. Uh, but it's called molested. And when I was young, I was molested. And so that talks about that. Um, this series on pain. And I had Bill Palsy. So uh, it's, they call it the, uh, what do they call it? A stroke of the face. And you have to, your natural stuff shuts down, and then you have to get the doctor to give you those steroids. And, you know, those are nasty little pills. <laughs> but you had, I had to wear an uh, eye patch because your eye won't close when my side is affected. Water, food, drips out of your mouth. It's a, it's, it's a real um, hard thing to go through. And the doctor said it's more psychologically on you looking at yourself and thinking that way than you do. But you feel really um, very uh, and I'm And this is the one I'm, I wanted to pull out for sure. It's never been seen. But it's called The Butcher. And I wanted to show the animals being killed, but in the background, I wanted to uh, concentrate on the Holocaust and uh, how we treat our people and animals in the, uh, the burning uh, spats of the bodies being burned at the Auschwitz. Um, I went through a hurricane in Florida, visiting, so it talks about that. I went through a tornado in Athens, Georgia, and talked about um, that. And this is part of the spree. You know, it just gets in a, it's, it's kind of an off sheet to pay, but I, I always like to go back and do something that has already been done at our uh spree, kind of homage. And I did the homage to the surface as well, you see later. But you know, it's just fed up and people are screaming, mad. Scared. Oh, I want to capture that. Anyway, now we're at plain politics. Uh, this is brainwashing. And then this is the war orphan who, uh, there's so many around the world. And so, you know, they're just left by themselves, a loving mother, a father, grandparents, some aunts and uncles. And so, uh, they're unwanted as well. But outside there, if you can see it, it's a skull. And then World War II, I, I gave homage to my parents, the World War II generation and stuff. But that's Joe Crawford. It's all those <laughs> propaganda that they like made and uh, hooray for the boys. And, uh, but uh, so it's about a lot of things, but mostly World War II generation. I mean, this is my new, one of my newest ones. And this is a map of America. And it talks about Trump, what he, what he says. A lot of words I got from him, a lot of words that I thought, I, got, I was reading every newspaper and watching TV and everything, and just got, I just had to scream. And so you have your enemy list here, Trump's enemy list. And then you have Trump's pals over here, 
and things that he said and other people said about him. And uh, I did one on Katrina, and uh, it sold in New York, and so I wanted to just, I figured vocabulary drawing would be great for this as well. And the reason I picked this map, there's a little insert right here that has Russia on it. <laughs> and, oh, well, that's the one I got to I got to get it wrong. Right. So, you see all the Valentines coming back and forth. Right. This is uh, one of the pieces that I showed at the uh, Tiffany Foundation. And this is one of the ones that, uh, one of the six that I, they awarded me that fellowship or grant. Uh, and uh, I was real happy about that. That's war. This is the war machine taking over the village. And this is 2003. I did a, a, uh, a series about isolation. So I thought that was real appropriate to bring that back. And um, I was real proud that I did that back then. You know, it's real sad too, as always. This is uh, back in 2004. With as Clinton was running for president and doing all this, like I did, they really said nasty things about her. But what was? They were saying nasty things about a female, an individual. Um, they all came from men. So I, I had a class, and I just started putting these pens in, and I felt that's what, that's, no matter how you feel about her today, that was offensive then. And uh, things they said about a female. And they still say that stuff. So. Uh, this is a war series, and it's about invasion. And I used to do a lot with wood and things like that way back when. It's about being caged in uh, the wars we go in the Middle East and things like that. And jail cells, and this is land, destroying the land, and bombs, and this and all that kind of stuff. The cages. And uh, we still keep people in cages today. Never, never changes. Um, now these are new, and this is a series I did on ten on poets, and it's about how he is separating all of us. Now I don't mean to offend any of Trump, Trump people out there, but it's just how I feel. So I, I'm the artist, and I get to say what I want. To. <laughs> so uh, this is groups, and he's uh, this is group A, I think group A, B, C, and D. Dividing us up and uh, separating all of us. And then this is a happy piece, actually. This is Avenue of the Americas. And this is, uh, I like that street. I've always loved that street, uh, the name of the street, because it's intermingled. It talks about North America, South America, and you know, we're just all there, and mingling all of the streets in New York City. And, you know, and it's, uh, it's a good piece. And then this it is Trump. And it seems like a lot of politics is Trump now, and dividing the Trump, and uh, putting it all together, corralling it, and stuff like that. So. And then when I came back from Italy in 84, about the Black Madonna and the Madonnas, I wanted to carry it on, so I did a series of them uh, of um, how the West was won. And this is uh, Madonna of the Plains killing India. And these are the two women Indians that were being slaughtered on the side of how, how the West was born. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, Mary Quayle speaking at the Republican Convention. And I think that's just a perfect portrait of her. That was in 92 in Atlanta. But, um, and this is a new one. And this is uh, uh, POTUS and Flotus. The first lady, and this is the president. <laughs> and then I did back then, and you found that I did a series of ten new commandments. And this is why I've no more hate groups, there's no more rape, persecution, no more guns, no more promise of depression. No, 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 no. Now I've got a creature, it's one of my favorite. Now these, uh, this is my personal collection, and I have about 500 of these animals that I started collecting when I was four years old. So uh, it's just things I collect. 
you know, I got from here or uh, Richards or uh, Tommy or you know, but it's just something else. That's my collection. I love it a lot better. And then, John, we talked about that film. And this is Rabbits, and it's a homage to the buffet. And when I was staying in Paris, I discovered, you know, he was a trained artist and everything, but then he found this outsider. And he kind of taught me a little bit about that and go further in the bar. So it's a homage to him. And uh, Love Birds, right here. And then this is the circus I was telling you about uh, for Toulouse and Trek. I wanted to pay homage to him. And then I did circus animals and circus performers and such. And then this is about 1990. This is Animal Kingdom. And uh, let's see. And dinosaur. Oh, and this is when I was living in New York. And I would always go on the streets. I'd always run up to uh, or run into uh, people with big uh, one of those uh, pit bulls. But I realized, and they tell me, New Yorkers tell me that what they're there for is to one thing the pit bulls were usually selling the drugs on the street, and that's to sick the dogs onto the police so they could get out of there. But they were like muscles and big, scary, and so that's what I think. And just people, you know, it's the uh, same thing. And then uh, lost, you know, flat cell, getting lost further and further. And this is the food chain. Uh, and then there's that Target. I, I saw this Target paper and I wanted it. And so it, this came to me the short life of uh, how animals have a short life and so do human animals. And it talks about food chain. And this is one of my special things that's never been seen. This is teddy bear. And when I was seven years old, uh, my mother, she was a a big in sports. She was in high school throughout her career. She was a big sports lady. She was uh, a star in everything, every sport. And so during World War II, she was one of those League of Their Own uh, ball players. But she uh, in the state of Georgia, so she traveled around the state of Georgia, basketball and softball, and they were the Bomberettes. And she was a uh, Rosie the Riveter <laughs> during that. But she won that when I was seven at uh, the Southeast Fair at Lakewood Freeway. She used to have a huge fair there. And so all the men just kept on ooing and on my mother because it was just one after another. <laughs> and she had packed, she had, I think it was like three, and she already won it, but she just kept on going. She was showing off. <laughs> so I've had that since I was a little boy. And then I also, stuff I have collected throughout the years, I put on there. Cats, rabies tags, dog rabies tags, things that I've had in patches and old t-shirts that I wanted to remember <laughs> that I sold in and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, and there's the uh, infamous sissy boy, which I thought was a sissy boy when I did that drawing, but became a sissy girl. And then this is a uh, bluebird, and it's another map, and it talks about fading uh, landscape disappearing. And then the animals are disappearing as well. And this is a Madonna bag. And this is a cow being led into the slaughterhouse so people can have their hamburgers. <laughs> and then Dolly the Sheep really was fascinating to me because it was the first clone of the Hatcher Khan. And so it's the same on each page. I mean, it's the same old picture here and there, because it's the clock. Right, now. Uh, now we're talking about death. A good, a good one, too. Matthew Shepard talks about his death, his obituary. I needed to speak about him. Uh, and then there's John F. Kennedy Jr. When I lived in New York, I took my roommate, his friend, South America, and traveled around the world as a corporate grower and a judge. And so I took him to see uh, Alice in Wonderland sculpture by the Bowdads right there. And my she never thought, and I stepped out and I saw this guy coming towards me and on rollerblades, and he kind of was having trouble with his rollerblades, so he stopped right in front of me to adjust. And I looked up and John Kennedy Jr. And he was beautiful. I 
as we can all imagine. But as I looked up, the sun was behind his head, and it was just like this, you know, yes, so. And then in Paris, I would go to uh, Pareto Sheds, a very famous Jewish cemetery, but others were welcome there, were buried there as well. But uh, this is the column area, and in the center of it, that's where they burn the bodies. And it's a fascinating building. And I would often, often, every time I go, I always have to take flowers to Simone Signore mm. and eat a peel and Gertrude Stein. Uh, and I would go there almost every day and draw a sketch. But uh, it's a uh, museum itself, the uh, sculpture, the, just the graves. And then I grew up with Chihuahuas, Chita and Jose, and this is about their death right here. And this is, uh, I love this drawing. Uh, waiting execution, and this is the cow about to be executed. Uh, he sees the other cow being executed, and the blood is blocked back as they shoot his brains. And then this is uh, Bush's war, like you know, after 9 11. And there were so many people dying young people, male, female, and I just, I just wanted them to, to be remembered somehow. And so I started to find them out even uh, age. And then about the third drawing, I started looking back and then I saw grave clothes appearing and that was unintentional. So that was an uh, interesting thing. I wasn't aware of that, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is a good piece here. And the thing that made me do that. And then, uh, more to add, more. Do a victory for Ted Wynette. I mean, stand by your man. And then the fabulous Diane. I met her whole family, but for her, for some reason, I, 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 I was just fascinated by her. And I was in London, and she lived in Kensington Gardens, and I was in the park next to it. And there was another man walking near me, and a woman with two babies. And all of a sudden, guards appeared out of nowhere and made a stop. Because there was a uh, maroon helicopter coming over us. They're about to land in the backyard of Kensington Palace. And people were running towards us, but they wouldn't let them get to where we were. And I was at this woman that was, you know, middle aged, and he said, with bags and bags of shopping bags. And then I steps her, Diana, and she was so beautiful, and it's like uh, more so than any photograph. But I remember the exact thing she had peach. Expensive clothing and pearls and beautiful. There's always a place to come for her. And now we're at, uh, where are we? It's food. And this is fresh. Uh, this is about Lucy Curry. And I think she's a Latin artist. I adore Lucy Curry. And so it was just a little Valentine I did to myself about Lucy Curry. And uh, she's very special. She's a very special Latin artist. And like I said, when I uh, finish my journal, I always feel like a, a drawing sometime from my journal. So I pick out certain passages, this and that, and make a new drawing out of that. And then, the love of my life, Meryl Streep. Uh, there's always something about Meryl. She always got to be, I like her politics, I like her films, I like her, and I don't apologize for her. And I like my life. So, uh, it's just all awesome. about, you know, when you're, like, you're sitting on a telephone and you're just nibbling, that kind of thing. That's where all I've been. Now, the, uh, this is about Sunday in the park. And the, the companion to it is hanging in the uh, window. And uh, it's about the same, but more faces and more, a little bit more angrier. But I forgot about this piece, and it's very calm for me. And I remember all those drawings and nights of state of all this and that. This was a real tough uh, exhibit to deal with at first because of all this work and I realized how old I was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, yeah. This is the same thing as one of those journal drawings after I'm through. And this was a uh, Marianne Lambert. 
she doesn't remember this, but she gave me these uh, picnic spoons from the 50s and forks, and it had like two different kind of butter knives and caviar, <laughs> sort of stuff. And so I made something out of it. And I said, if I had a dinner party, this is what I'd buy. And when I did this. <laughs> and so, of course, Meryl was in there. And uh, it's just, uh, I would love you to sit and listen to these people talk. I, I couldn't offer anything, but just to sit back and listen to them. And this is the circus series I was telling you about. And uh, I love this piece. It took forever. And I would go to Beaver Highway to the Japanese Asian markets and get free newspapers. And uh, I did each little strip, I did glue one at a time. And I could have done it faster, but I was just loving it so much, the process. It was like Zen and, and just in the mood, in the moment. And this is the latest Real Sweet piece. And this is, I did for Barbara and Peter, Barbara and Peter Hand. And it's filmography, and it talks about, it has all the list of Meryl Streep's movies. And so I've got to add a few more to it to bring it up and everything. And I thought she needed butterflies in her sculpture. And then in a piece in there that's hanging is a Haitian angel. I bought it in New York. There, there's a gallery that's helping out Haiti and the uh, art makers, they crap people there. And so I bought a little angel. And then, this is a portrait of a produce boy. It could be me, but uh, my father was a big produce man in uh, Atlanta, a big time, Martin Jones Produce. And uh, so he, he was a real big businessman, but he was never around. So uh, I guess that might be him or me or somebody, but it has to do with that period of my life. I think we're through. Oh, and the journals. Uh, these are journals that uh, I keep. Uh, uh, the pages I don't want anybody to see after I'm dead. But then we had to find a place where it could be okay for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then once I do a uh, journal, then I move on to them. And then I have all these interesting little books, and I can decide if you want a big one or a little one. I like to do my own little books, and so I make like drawings and paintings and so And there's Miss Audrey Hepburn. I had to have her on the show. And that's the cat that saved my life. And then here's more journals. I think that's it, guys. But I want to. I want to say thank you to them. And her crew. They were so great to me, and it was such a pleasure to work with y'all. And uh, thank you.